So I've been asked to go over part E of this question from uh, June 09 S2 at Excel. Um, and to quickly go over the earlier parts of the questions as well, although it looks reasonably standard. Part A, you're using symmetry, only one mark, showing that the EX is equal to 2. Part B, it was basically to find a PDF, and they gave the format of the PDF, because it's what's known as a triangular distribution. And you're given the for format of what to do, but basically, you can use the graph, and what I did was work out the gradient of this, which is a quarter, which means that we've got a quarter x, or a equals to a quarter. Then the gradient of this one is minus a quarter, and I use y minus y1 mx minus x1 to get the equation, but there's various things you can do um, to, to get the equation. So we've got a is a quarter and b equals 1. Uh, the more substantial part of the question, again relatively standard, was to find a variance or standard deviation in this case, and they've given the answer. You've got two parts to the rule, so we're using the variance formula, and we use it, we find the e, the expectation of x squared first, and put it into the variance formula. But we've got two two parts to it. This part applies between two and naught, or yeah, so they say. So we're integrating a quarter x times x squared between 2 and 0. And then this part here is between 4 and 2. So we're integrating that between 4 and 2. And then getting working that out, you end up with 14 over 3. Not forgetting to go back then to the variance formula, put it in here. We've worked out the x squared, and that's the mean squared, which is 2, which comes to 2 thirds. And that comes to 0 0.816, uh, which was given in the question, so I wrote as required. Uh, part D, normally with these questions, what I would say is use a P, use a CDF, you know, the cumulative function, because by definition of the CDF, FQ1 is equal to 0 0.25. But that would be, or of course it would work, but that would be a bit of a waste of time here, or just waste of a line of writing, if you like. Um, we basically can use in the fact that the area under the graph is equal to a quarter here, so we're looking for the value Q1 where we've got a quarter here. So we can just integrate with an unknown limit there of Q1 of that. And we know it's got to be a quarter x that we're dealing with because we're dealing with the left-hand side of this triangular distribution. And you get q1 is equal to 1.41. Right, now for part e, which is the um, bit that I've been asked about, only two marks, but it says state with a reason whether p x 2 minus sigma x 2 plus sigma is more or less than 0 0.5. Now we've got all the information to answer this question. Um, so I'm, I'm going to actually write more than would be needed because I'm hoping that by doing that we will explain, you'll understand what's in the mark scheme and what they're actually looking for. So do not take what I'm about to say as this is what you might need to write to in the exam and take it very slowly and so that you can hopefully understand what they're looking for in the actual exam. Right, so what do we know? We know the standard deviation. We've already been given the standard deviation. We also effectively know the, the interquartile range. How do we know the interquartile range? Well, we know that the lower quartile is 1.41. We could easily work out the upper quartile, so the difference between them we can easily work out as well. I'm going to draw it on a diagram, just to say, we we'll probably do a bit more than we need, but that's better, at least this video has been of some use to you, if you can understand what's required. I'm going to use the graph as a kind of visual aid for what's going on here. We've worked out that Q1 is 1.41. There. We can therefore work out that this number here, by symmetry, will be, well, the difference between 2 and 1.41 is equal to 0 0.59. So that will be 2.59. Okay? And we know that this area is 0 0.5 by definition because we split it into, we found the lower quartile. That would be the upper quartile. So we've got 0 0.5 in the middle there. So how does this help us? Well, 
we're being asked for the lower quartile x this is our x number let's put a different color to make this clearer so here's two here for two and two minus the lower quartile which is 0.826 sorry not the lower quartile i'm now looking at this here so we're looking at p of 2 minus sigma and 2 plus sigma well 2 minus sigma we know it's 0 0.846 0 0.816 should i say so basically we've been this is the interval we're comparing it with so we're being asked if this is greater than or equal to 0 0.5 well we can see that these numbers would come afterwards here wouldn't it it'd be a wider interval yeah because it, it would be this green area here represented in that well, this being 2.816 so as i said i've done far more than is needed to they want an explanation but they don't expect numbers or anything you might find that you work some stuff out you don't really need to do much all you need to see is that this is a wider interval from here to here than the interquartile range which is from here that's the interquartile range there so the answer is larger than 0.5 since probability of 2 minus sigma less than x and 2 plus sigma is a wider interval than the interquartile range. Don't need to write exactly those words, but I think the mark seam says something like that. This is what would and anything like that explanation that this is actually gotta be more than 0 0.5 because it's more than this would do. Okay, I hope that helps. Bye.